Classifying life is an endless endeavor. Nature does not owe us explanation and clarification, and so, any attempts to neatly categorize and analyze the kingdom of life is inherently going to be quite difficult. We are left using the fields of phylogeny, the study and categorization of living organisms based on physical and genetic similarities. By assuming that similarities in those aspects denote relation, one can map out phylogenetic trees, diagrams that describe the evolutionary path any species took. It also allows us to separate life into neat little boxes to satisfy our craving for order. Over the years, the Hunter's Guild has classified many distinct clades of monsters, grouped based on physical and genetic evidence. One group that is perpetually underestimated is that of the bird wyvern. Compared to their better known relatives, the flying wyverns, bird wyverns simply can't keep up. They are generally smaller, weaker, and less assertive, and as such have a reputation of being pests rather than true beasts. This is undeserved, however. Bird wyverns are one of the most social, intelligent, and crafty clades the guild has ever classified. Bird wyverns come in two forms, flighted and flightless. While these categories make some of them look extremely different from one another, rigorous research has instilled the classification of bird wyvern with uncharacteristic confidence. The tracing of bird wyvern evolution remains perhaps one of the greatest scientific achievements of the Hunter's Guild, as the lineage of this class is the best understood out of all of them. In the order Sauritia, which includes almost all wyverns, a suborder named Avepoda, bird feet, emerged. And it all began with one ancestor, Iguru Ebisu the oldest known extinct species. This progenitor wyvern, even older than the wyvern rex, had feathered wings and long legs. In an age so ancient only bones in the soil remember it, this creature flew around swiftly, likely hunting prey by stabbing it with its sharp beak. Iguro Ibisu is believed to be the originator of all bird wyverns. It eventually split into two evolutionary branches, which, on a phylogeny, are represented by the two infraorders of Avepoda. One descendant of Iguru Ibisu was the Borudoru, a condor-like wyvern that began sprouting even more feathers and developed an even sharper beak. It was likely an active predator and carnivore that hunted large prey, as its beak was seemingly much more adapted to causing lacerations and deep wounds than to simply stab small animals to death. Borudoru is believed to be the ancestor of all flighted bird wyverns, and so, its descendants are grouped into the infraorder True Bird Wyverns. These bird wyverns seemingly resemble flying wyverns. Two wings, two hind legs, a tail. They differ from flying wyverns in the fact that they are generally smaller and grow a hard beak, which flying wyverns generally lack. True bird wyverns only include two named superfamilies, while all the other species are generally classified without any superior taxonomic ranks. One of these superfamilies, the ear birds, also called the yan, are easily identified by their namesake their massive rubbery ears. These structures are extremely sensitive to sound and give the ear birds a sensory advantage when hunting or just grazing. A key feature is the massive shovel-like beak that these wyverns use to dig up insects. They also possess hard yet light shelling on their wing arms and back, making them both nimble and resistant to many forms of attack. Earbirds additionally generally possess a fire sack, albeit a much weaker one compared to flying wyverns. There are two genuses in the superfamily, and being able to differentiate them quickly is a vital skill any guild member is encouraged to pick up early on. 
The Yan Kutku is either pink and red with a large yellow beak, or blue in coloration, depending on the specific species. The Kutku is skittish and meek. While it can put up a fight if cornered, it is rarely interested in direct conflict. They would much rather observe and then try to intimidate their foe by making themselves as large as possible. Failing that, it will most likely retreat. While it can use its flame sack to spew fire, it comes out as small fireballs that don't pack much of a punch. Thus, while the Yan Kutku is sometimes considered an early test for young greenhorn hunters, it is, in the grand scheme of things, not particularly difficult to deal with. The second representative of the earbirds is the Yang Garuga, defined by a dark purple coloration and a characteristic barbed tail. Contrary to its brother, the Yang Garuga is viciously aggressive, with enough strength to hold its own against not just all other bird wyverns, but most wyverns, period. Their poisonous tail swipes are deadly, and their fire burns so hot that a charged flame explosion from a young garuga can entirely vaporize smaller creatures. But most of all, young garuga are relentless, attacking anything they encounter and fighting until the bitter end. One has even been observed winning a territorial dispute with a devil joe. Not even their own relatives are safe. Young garuga have been observed to partake in brute parasitism, where they lay their eggs into a young kutku nest and trick their meek cousins into raising their offspring for them. The young garuga is the reason phylogeny is taught to hunters in the first place. Mistakenly attacking a garuga because you thought it was a kutku is essentially a death sentence. The second superfamily within the true bird wyvern infraorder are the voice birds. This superfamily includes all flighted bird wyvern that possess an inflatable air sac, usually located on their chest. This air sac is, as the name suggests, used to amplify the bird wyvern's vocalizations. While it is theorized that this clade holds numerous as of yet unnamed species, its main representative is the Kurupeko, a colorful voice bird that uses its ear sac to mimic the roars of other monsters, summoning them to defend it. Kurupeko do not however exert full control over the creature they summon, they merely call it. And some unlucky Kurupeko have been observed being killed by their would-be savior. While it isn't clear if this is a general feature of voice birds, it is important to note that all Kuropeko species have flints on their wing arms, which they can use to produce sparks of varying kinds. The other members of the true bird wyverns include the Hypnocatries, believed to be the oldest species of the infraorder due to its extreme similarities to Borudoru. In fact, when the first fossils of Borudoru were found, they were initially discarded as simply old Hypnocatries bones until further inspection revealed their true value. In its feathered gown, the Hypnocrates possesses a sleep sack, which produces a soporific mist, used to knock prey out swiftly. That aside, the Hypnocrates is generally believed to be extremely similar to Borudoru, to the point where studying Hypnocrates has given the guild insights into the past of the entire bird wyvern clade. In a sense, its relationship to the ancestry of bird wyvern is similar to that of the tigrex to the ancestry of flying wyverns. Another representative of true bird wyverns is the gypseros, a swamp dweller that is well known to any greenhorn hunter. Gypseros evolved particularly drastically in response to environmental pressures, something that can be determined by looking at its immediate ancestor, the bajirisu. Both look almost identical. Huge beak, hardened head crest, grey scale coat set upon a leathery skin. But Bajirisu was, as far as the fossil record shows, a fairly short-lived species. It seems to have had no real defense strategy besides hitting attackers with its club-like tail. It was, unsurprisingly, outcompeted by most other bird wyverns. 
So how did the Gypsaros persevere where its brother failed? The answer lies in the differences it exhibits compared to its ancestor. The Gypsaros lost the club tail, but instead gained a poison sack that it can use to fling venomous globules at attackers. Its new elastic tail can also function as a whip with deceptively long range. Most strikingly, however, is that the modern Gypsaros head crest is no longer purely decorative. Instead, it is enriched with light crystals and, when struck against the wyvern's beak, can produce a blinding flash of light that stuns unprepared opponents. But maybe the Gypsaros' most crucial adaptation, and the one that perhaps saved it from suffering the same fate as the Bajirisu, is the Gypsaros' rubbery hide, which replaces much of its scale armor and makes it especially resistant to electric attacks. This is believed to be an adaptation specifically to ward off the Gypsaros' most common cause of death, the Kezu and its paralyzing thunder attacks. On the various islands across the old world, one can find another true bird wyvern, the Malfestio. This owl-like creature hides some truly unique features, as many island dwellers do. For one, its wings hide massive, switchblade-like claws that can be extended swiftly, turning the wings into fearsome cutting devices. The Malfestio also produces two distinct types of chemical weapons. Its feathery tuft produces orange microscales that can be dispersed at will, which contain a strong psychedelic that dazes and confuses victims, which are then open to be slashed by the Malfestio's wings. In the wings themselves, a sleep organ produces knockout fluid in the form of droplets. By vibrating its wing membranes rhythmically, the Malfestio can spray these droplets at opponents, putting them to sleep. This makes the Malfestio an especially powerful nighttime hunter, as it is also able to fly almost entirely silently. Originally found in the New World, but since also spotted on the Old Continent, the Puke Puke is one of the more colorful true bird wyvern, with a vibrant coat of feathers and scales that change color in order to communicate its intentions and emotions. The Puke Puke produces a powerful venom that it can either spit from the mouth as balls or spray from its hose-like tail as a mist. The Puke Puke is also known to swallow rocks and nuts to give its toxic spit a bit of extra oomph. The Puke Puke has zygodactyl feet, meaning it has two digits on the front and two on the back of its foot. This is a feature generally found in tree dwellers, which indicates that the Puke Puke at some point lived in the high trees of the New World. This is however not the case anymore. Puke Pukes generally live on the forest floor and do not venture out into the branches. They were likely pushed out of their niche by more successful airborne predators, most likely flying wyverns. The most recent addition to the true bird wyverns is the Acnosom, which had been known to the locals of the Kamura region for generations, but was only recently properly classified by guild officials. This bird wyvern is easily identified by its enormous head crest that resembles a large parasol. This crest, as well as the Acnosom's wings, is lined with hard, rubbery material that makes the covered areas extremely resistant to damage and extremely tough on impact. This allows the Acnosom to both cover itself in a protective barrier of crest and wing, or use either of them to bludgeon enemies. Additionally, Acnosom are adapted to eating not just insects, but fire herbs as well, granting them a weak fire breath in the form of incendiary spitballs. While the Borudoru was evolving into the true bird wyverns, Iguru Ebisu spawned a second distinct ancestor, one that would define the second major group of bird wyverns. This was the Keputosu, a fish-eating bird wyvern with a toothed beak and malformed wings. 
This creature was beginning to lose most of its feathers and had thick, pronounced and heavy wing claws. It was by all intents and purposes a supremely unfortunate species. Its wings were getting too weak and misshapen to fly, but its legs were not yet strong enough to effectively run on land for prolonged periods of time. And so, the Keputosu was likely extremely short-lived as a species. It did, however, exist long enough to give rise to what would become the second infra-order of Avepoda, the Runner Wyverns, sometimes also referred to as the Raptor Wyverns. These bird wyverns are entirely flightless, living exclusively on the ground where they run around on their strong hind legs. Runner wyverns tend to have strong, well-developed front limbs with sharp claws, allowing them to swipe at prey and grasp objects in some cases. They are also among the most social of all classified monsters, forming large packs and generally hunting in group formation although there are exceptions. The Runner Wyvern Infra Order is much more organized and defined than the True Bird Wyverns, and can be split up into three distinct superfamilies into which all the known species fall into. The New World Raptors are, as the name suggests, the only type of Runner Wyverns that are found on the New Continent. Called the Yaku in the native tongue, the New World Raptors have more developed hands than the other two superfamilies, and are also the only runner wyverns that live solitary lifestyles. The Yaku are also, despite their respectable size, fairly docile as far as bird wyverns go. Despite the name of the superfamily, the Kulu Yaku has actually been spotted rarely in the Old World, while its cousin, the Tsitsiyaku, remains entirely exclusive to the coral highlands of the New World. Due to their recent discovery, much still remains to be learned about the Yaku, as they are fascinating creatures. The Old Continent is meanwhile ruled by, perhaps unsurprisingly, the Old World Raptors. These were some of the earliest monsters to be classified by the guild, and are spread far and wide across the northwestern parts of the Old World, with some living further south. Old World raptors can be identified by their slim builds and simple head crests, which are generally located centrally on top of their skulls. They generally live in highly social groups, with the common individuals having their species name suffixed by prey, while the alphas receive the suffix drome. So the Blue Velocity, which live in the tempered woodlands of the Western Shrade region, are made up of Velocity Prey and Velocity Drome. In the northern Furahia Mountains, meanwhile, prowl the Gia Prey and the Gia Drome, icy cousins of the Velocity that live in much larger groups and use freezing spit to defend themselves. Gia and Velocity are more closely related to each other than the other Old World Raptors are. In fact, for a while, there was a heated debate whether or not the Jia should just be classified as a subspecies of the Velocity. Whatever the case may be, currently they are two separate species that are just very closely related. In the southwestern deserts live the Gen, yellow and green raptors that have two small crests on their heads, as well as massive frontal fangs. Their colorful hide has a unique property. Under the scale sits a wet membrane able to entirely neutralize most venoms. This gives the gen some of the most sophisticated toxin resistance of the bird wyvern clade. This is believed to be a self-directed defense mechanism. The gen have themselves a very strong paralytic venom, strong enough to paralyze any target almost immediately, so this hide protects them from accidentally paralyzing each other during play or roughhousing. In the swamps around Dundorma, as well as in caves and volcanoes near Erude, one can find the Ayo, bizarre old world raptors that have no scales and are instead covered in a moist red skin that gives them ample resistance to temperature and parasites, 
but is overall unable to offer protection from claws and teeth. The Io also have one of the most bizarre head crests, massive bloated bumps on their heads that hold a powerful poison sack. Said poison can be spat at enemies, but because the organ produces so much more poison than any Io could feasibly spit in a single day, their bodies are perpetually drenched in toxic waste. Even their bones are said to be deadly due to this. Predators thus generally avoid the Io thanks to this accidental defense mechanism, as any part of their body, even a single scale, holds enough poison to seriously hurt anyone that ingests or touches it. The third superfamily of the runner wyverns is called the dog wyverns. They superficially resemble old world raptors, in that they are runner wyverns which live in social groups on the old continent. Dog wyvern however inhabit the southeastern areas of the continent, and while there is some overlap in habitat with the old world raptors, they are generally separate in populations. Physically, dog wyverns are quite a bit burlier and wider than the other raptors, having thick, muscular bodies. They also grow much more varied crests and decorative displays, many of which are placed in odd areas and serve additional purposes beyond merely signaling dominance. Due to their differences to the old world raptors, their nomenclature is also different. The lesser members of any dog wyvern pack are simply called by their species name, while the alpha of their pack is given the title Great. This naming convention is however debated, as many natives of the old and the new world still collectively write these names the way they would have for old world raptors, simply using the title Dos to refer to the larger alpha species. However, in the combined texts of the guild, this nomenclature of calling the small individuals by their species name and the big ones by great has still stuck around, so it is the one that will be presented in these documentaries. So, the small purple dog wyverns which inhabit the southern deserts and the western island district, for example, are called jaggy, while their bulky large leader is called a great jaggy. The Jaggy are jumpy and highly social, forming large packs that confuse prey with their erratic movements before taking it down. The pack is led by a great Jaggy, whose frill serves as its crest of dominance. Using its weight and barbed tail, the great Jaggy protects its pack, and can even issue commands to them using its characteristic howls. In the arctic regions to the north, prowl the Baggy and their Alpha, the Great Baggy. They are the largest dog wyverns, and runner wyverns for that matter. The Great Baggy is easy to recognize due to its unusual head crest, which resembles a large horn. They patrol areas close to where the Jia live, but they have never been observed interacting thus far. The Baggy utilize a sleep sack to spit out soporific liquid at prey, knocking it out instantly. The smaller baggy will however only do so at the command of their great leader. Great baggy are considered extremely dangerous due to this sleep inducing ability, as falling asleep in front of a pack of baggy is generally the end for most hunters. In the Terosu region, as well as in some volcanic zones, one finds the Rogi, a dog wyvern that, similar to the Io, exchanged its scale armor for a moist, disease-resistant hide. The Rogi grow two small poison organs on the sides of their heads, allowing them to spew small puffs of venomous mist onto enemies. Once a male Rogi has grown enough and has survived a certain period of lonesome pilgrimage, those two poison sacks grow into one single massive one, signaling to its brethren that it is now a great Rogi, an alpha with enhanced poison and command over the pack. Great Rogi are notoriously mischievous and seem to actively seek out human travelers to mess with. Because of this, 
they are disproportionately frequently represented in quests. Exclusively in the Eastern Island District live the Macau, who through insular isolation have evolved into truly bizarre creatures. They are completely covered in green feathers and have a thick armored tail. The alpha of the pack, the Great Macau, grows a feather crown to signal its authority, as well as a wide paddle at the end of its tail. This tail is so muscular that the Great Macau can stand on it and even use it to launch itself forward. The hands on the Macau are also highly developed, allowing them to grasp objects and punch enemies in a rudimentary fashion. Interestingly, while Macau form packs like the other dog wyvern, they don't employ social hunting strategies. Macau are highly individualist and will simply flail around with no coordination whatsoever, not listening to their alpha. The resulting chaos is ironically extremely effective at overwhelming the confused prey. The most recently classified dog wyvern is the Izuchi of the Kamura region. Like the Macau, they have unusually well-developed tails, but instead of hard shelling, their tails end in sharp blades that can cut vegetation as well as prey. If the Macau use no hunting strategies, then the Izuchi are conversely masters of it. The Great Izuchi uses its screamer sack to command its lesser brothers into complex formations, spinning their tails around rhythmically in order to cleave prey apart, leaving no gaps for evasive maneuvers. The Izuchi form relatively small packs and reinforce them through playful social behavior, including the Alpha, who is never too embarrassed to be seen snuggling with its kin. These 19 species, as well as their subspecies, grouped into three superfamilies, comprise all currently known bird wyverns. Despite their reputation, they are a varied and fascinating clade, one worth all the effort of researching them. Then again, no life is too small to be amazing. Wonder dwells in every corner of our home. Such is our immense privilege. Hey everyone, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, a very special thank you to all of our patrons, which include Fictionape, Sini, Anthony the Hedgehog, Arcturian711, Claire Miboon, Danilo Villavicencio, Gio, Jameson Tate, Joseph Law, Makot O2, Mr. Pyramid, Mr. Meander, Pide Fuego, Peroscoco, Person 212, Project Iceman, Russell, Vulgar Beast, Oak Wood Tree, Iron Camel, and Courage. Take care, everyone. Thank you as always, and I will see you next time. Be well. Bye bye.